Eamon Khan here four seconds out with British heavyweight champion out to defend his title 12th of October, Fabio Wardley. Fabio, good to see you. How's life treating you? Good, mate. All going well, thank you. All going well. Good. Great to hear. Before we get into the fight talk, though, uh, the announcements come in like uh, buses at the same time, or so the cliche goes, which I'm messing up here. But um, you've also signed with Queensbury, a multi-fight deal. Talk me through the process of getting that deal over the line and why Queensbury? Uh, yeah, simple enough to get over the line. Not hard work at all. Um, it was just, I felt like I was at, the, at a point, at a stage of my career where, where aligning myself with the right promoter would do me the best, um, do me the best going forwards. Obviously, trying to set myself up in, and get myself in line for world titles and things like that over the over the next year or so um, is the aim. So you need to have someone in your corner kind of backing you and, and pushing you in the right places and just getting your name in the mix, really, and and fighting your corner and saying, no, we think our fight should be in line for the shot or next in line or eliminator or wherever it may be. So you can do as like, I've been a free agent for a little while and you can do well like that. Um, but there comes a certain point where you need um, some alignment and someone with you to kind of back you and get you in the right place. How much of the decision on your end with the options that I imagine were on the table mm-hmm. hinged on some of the heavyweights that they, that each promoter had on their roster and the potential matchups that they could make in house? Yeah. It, um, it, it was definitely a factor. Um, things right now are a lot more, especially in boxing across all of the promoters. They're a lot more fluid now. The um, the kind of division that there used to be between promoters and being able to fight on a rival promotion doesn't seem to be there, um, or at least not in the same way that it was a couple of years ago, however. So that's obviously a lot easier across the board, but it's even easier if you're under the same under the same roof, under the same banner and under the same promotion. So um yeah it was a factor when making the decision as well as to again there's there's i want to be in big fights and in big occasions and stuff and also again half of the reason why i was a free agent was so things were simple and easy and there wasn't a lot of fussing and, and faffing around and if we're all under one roof then it, there's nothing simpler now the second announcement is that the fight is now confirmed the rematch between you and Fraser Clark. You said in the aftermath in the interviews, especially with Sky Sports, said, "Look, he he de- deserves a rematch." And there were options on the table. We discussed this beforehand a few weeks back at the uh, Chisora versus Joyce uh, fight week, and you said, "Look, I've got other options on the table, other other you know other fights that could uh, maybe take my fancy as well too." But you've decided upon the rematch. I imagine that you must be happy to have got this rematch over the line considering this is what the fans wanted specifically to see from you both of you next yeah look <clears throat> I did have I did have other options and me retaining my belts put me in a good position but I want I, I know how I'd have felt if I'd have moved on without picking this box off um and kind of closing that chapter which being Fraser Clark so and also I know like I always feel a bit of a a bit of an onus to the fans as well to give them kind of what they want, what they want to see. Um, so it played a part in my decision making as well when we were looking at other options and stuff. And they just didn't really, they also didn't really get me like the same kind of buzz, the same kind of energy this fight did. The one that kind of g myself up for when I thought, nah, actually this one is the one that only I, I know I want and I know I want to tick off. So that's why we went in this direction. What's the difference in your preparation this time around, considering you shared the 12 round or the rounds with him previously yeah look we, me and the team we've reviewed the footage and the um we've gone over the first fight a few times and picked out some key points we need to adjust and change and and um obviously make areas of improvement but only i didn't i didn't perform the best just overall my box my boxing performance wasn't ideal i know it was an entertaining fight but <clears throat> the way I boxed wasn't ideal. So there are some tweaks that need to be made. But even that being said, I still think I won the fight. Um, I still think I did enough to get the win. So along that, plus these tweaks, it will be a much, much simpler. Um, I'll make it look like a much easier fight as well. So it's not an overhauling perform- performance then. When these rematches happen, people kind of say, look, this is round 13 and it goes from there. You don't feel that from your point of view that you need to do all that much to get clinched that victory more decisively this time um i don't necessarily need to go look that option is always 
there for me. That's plan B, C, D, maybe. Like we put it the down the line. If that's why, if I just need to tuck my chin and bite my gum shield and go forward, then as as seen, it's perfectly within my repertoire. Um, but there's other avenues we can go down as well. I can I can box. I am sharp. I am crisp. I can get all those shots off with without getting tagged the same amount of time. So we're gonna we're gonna plan for a couple of different eventualities and how he may approach it as well. Um, and just have a few things tucked away in the locker. One of the big parts of the Ben Davison, you know, team and and management of a, a fight in total is the preparation that you do with, you know, the tape watching with Lee Wiley and such and game planning for that. How much of the tape that you watched in preparation for the first fight did Fraser replicate in the ring? Uh, there was a lot of key areas, um, which is almost. <laughs> It's almost kind of half annoying because when you sit back down with them, they go, see, look, we told you this would happen and it happened. And you're like, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, I got it wrong, I got it wrong. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, there was a lot from that they picked out in the first fight, a lot of sequences and moments and things that all happened pretty much exactly how we drilled them. Um, and had they worked exactly how we wanted them to work. Um, there was just a few errors of my own along the way that I didn't execute them in the right way. Although I know the answer to the questions, setting them up is is the right way to go about it. Um, and just in a lot of those in a lot of those instances, I wasn't doing it the right way. Do you feel that you'll see a different version of Fraser in the ring as well, too? Um, I'm sure him and him and the team are going to want to make adjustments, but. <laughs> Uh, uh, for how long he's been boxing and the style he's kind of set into and the age he's at and things, the old cliche of Kenny teaching old dog new tricks kind of thing is is in there somewhere. Um, I don't think he's he's dumb enough to just roll in there exactly how he went in the first fight, but I think after a certain certain bit of time, certain number of rounds or however, you just kind of fall back into your your base norm. Um, and I think that's probably how how that will go. What was the most surprising thing about Fraser's game that kind of caught you maybe off guard a little bit uh, from your first fight? Was there anything that stuck out that you thought maybe this isn't what we planned for or this was better than I thought it was? Um, <clears throat> honestly, I he had he had more kind of heart, will, and grit in there than I thought he might have. Um. He he rode through a lot of it, um, a lot of the kind of stickier moments and things. He really he really stuck him out where I thought oh, I'm just gonna bulldoze through him. And once he kind of, once he kind of feels the power and feels the pressure and just I'm like, constantly in front of him, he's just gonna want to lay and roll over, which he didn't. And credit to him for that. Um, so it's something we've noted and we'll we'll be aware of going into the next one. Does hitting the that sort of quote-unquote landmark of doing the full 12 rounds the first time around look you'll know it in the in the background in the gym that you'll have banked those rounds and know you can comfortably do it but on the night is a different thing in front of the lights in front of the people doing it is a different thing does that you know bring anything extra that you know that you've got the gas tank to manage through those 12 rounds as a heavyweight under that pressure under the, that big moment in your career does it do more for you going into the second fight uh, yeah, it's always nice to have that banked and kind of in the back in your back pocket and locked away because knowing you can do it is it removes that question mark and knowing I can do it at the in the kind of fight that I did it in at the pace I did it in throwing the same amount, throwing the amount of punches that I threw and just kind of it was an it was an all action twelve rounds not kind of we tiptoed through it it was all the way through I was constantly in front of him constantly throwing punches so that I can put my full energy into it and still come out the other side it's it's a nice thing to know in yourself. Is the October date enough time for the nose to not be a factor here in the fight? Yeah, look, it's a lot of people made a lot of that. Um, I think that's what skewed a lot of the fight as well. Only I had a cut on my nose and it was just bleeding a bit. Like it was made it was made to be a very big and, and massive thing, and it was just my nose wasn't broke. I could breathe out of it per breathe out of my nose perfectly fine. It was literally just a cut on the skin of my nose. Um, that's all. Mm -hmm. It's healed over. It's left a scar and whatever. And it, it may open again. It may not. Who knows? But it's to me, it's a minor factor. It's not. It's not a big deal. Um, and definitely not the kind of big deal that everyone was 
making it out to be on the night. It's a great fight to get over the line and people will be glad to see it. But I just wonder how close might it have been to having the rematch in the UK as opposed to over in Saudi? Yeah, it was an option we looked at. Um, it was an option we looked at. We were having a variety of discussions about when to have the fight, where to have the fight, um, UK, not UK, London, not London, here, there and everywhere. We, we were playing around with a bunch of different ideas um, and we just set on Saudi. That opportunity came up, that option came around and us as a team and obviously his team as well all saw it as a good option. Without prying too much and you can feel free to no comment it, but how different is the the the, the financial package from a fight in the UK Oh, to compare to one over in Saudi, is it just a point where it's like it's a no-brainer? Uh, yeah. Look, I think it goes without saying that there is a there is a certain incentive behind fighting in Saudi. But as well as that, um, we thought about the fight and we did the U we we did that big UK fight in the UK for British fans and however and now to take that as good a fight as it was and how much that did for both of mine Fraser's names in the UK, take that same fight, put it on a more global stage. What will that do for, for me, for us going forward and where I want to put myself in this kind of world stage in this world position. I think that made, that was another key factor that made a lot of sense. With cards like this, I wonder, do, do you factor in the fact that there's so many you know, good fights and intriguing matchups on this card that you also have to put in like a stellar performance to, so that you're the fighter that remains on people's lips and on the, on the tips of people's tongues after the fact, because you've got Baturbio versus Bibble, which is a highly anticipated fight, but then you've got Upper Tyre in there, Eubank Jr. in there, you've got Shakur Stevenson, all big names, who a fight of this magnitude might potentially get lost in the shuffle. So do you have? Do you feel like you have to really kind of be at the top of your A game and, and really pull out like a fight of the year almost contender to... Keep your name in people's mouths. Yes, I know. Um, I think that would be more of a factor if this was our first time. But mm. I think the fact that it's a rematch and coming off the first fight of that, what it was, I think out of aside from the headline, the main fight everyone is looking towards is mine and Fraser's because mm. we've got that we've got that history already built in from the first fight. You can already look at the evidence of how that fight went around. So everyone's looking for us to pick up in round 13 and just crack on and get going like we did in the first round. So that is already half set. But yeah, like performing on the night and being a standout performance is always something I want. I always want to be the one that, that people talk about or at least the fans are entertained by. Um, but I think we've got a bit of equity in there already, obviously, by having that first fight already picked off. And Garnu talked about in his fight with AJ about timing and getting everything right and getting everything clockwork as to used as to when you come to the ring and that affecting your performance. I just wonder as an athlete and yourself who's been doing a lot of strength and conditioning, you do this game planning with Ben Davison, how much have you factored into making sure all those pieces on the night are right so you perform as well too, the best of your ability? Yeah, look, we, we know, well, I know at least where where things went awry a bit in the first camp and weren't ideal and weren't set perfect and things. And we've we've made those adjustments, we've made those changes, and we know how to position ourselves better in the in the lead up, not just fight week, but in the whole of the camp and just be in a better place physically, mentally, everything just shooting in the right direction. Everyone on the same page and moving forward in the right way. Get the victory as you plan to do. So I just wonder, you're casting your thoughts to the main event. You're sitting in front row and watching Baturbio versus Bibble. Who have you got your money on? Money on, sorry. Uh, for me, it's a, it's, a hard, it's a hard one. It is a hard one. But um, for me, I think this is maybe just more of a personal choice, a personal preference. Um, I'd pick Bivol, I think. I, I just like the way he boxes, the way he goes about his business. Um, I think it's more of just a personal preference, really, because... Both of them have the skills to beat the other one. That much is that much is already there and said by both of their careers. But I think I just I just kind of edge and like Bivol a bit more in that. With the fight preparations, how much of your sparring will be in house with the heavyweights that are under the Ben Davison banner? Uh, it'll be a mix. It'll be a mix. Obviously, we want sparring partners who can replicate Fraser in certain ways and certain aspects. Um, and all. All of those attributes aren't in the gym, so we will need to go external. That will be the plan. Um, but we can get a bit of everything we need from from all over. Will you get the opportunity to spar AJ at all? Uh, no, I doubt it. Like, ultimately, 
AJ is not focused on helping me out for my fight. He's full, full on for his own fight. Um, and pulling in the right sparring partners for that is obviously his going to be primary focus, him and the team's focus. So I don't exactly fight like the Bois does. I don't necessarily have the same aspects to my fight game that he does. Um, so it wouldn't be ideal for him to spar, to, for, for him to spar me now. Um, but in the future, potentially, yeah. We discussed this in our last interview, just your breakdown on the Joshua Dubois fight. I just wanted to ask a couple of extra questions on it. When the fight's been talked about with AJ and Dubois, a lot has been talked about like who kind of lands first and lands their cleanest shot first and hardest. But I just wondered, with AJ's profile and working with Ben, is for both fighters, but more specifically AJ, is the boxing IQ and setting up those moments being overlooked here in this fight? Uh, yeah, the, the amount that it's a factor, I think... As heavyweights, you can always say, oh, whoever lands first and whoever lands hardest, you can you can always say that because we've all got the power to hurt the other one. Um, that's just a given, being a heavyweight. That's, that's, just go, that's just normal going into it. Um, so you have to look at the other aspects of, of preparation, of experience, of, of boxing skill and IQ and timing and things like that. Um, and I think in a lot of those areas... Um, AJ edges, edges it for me um, I think in a lot of those areas he's a lot more settled into himself and how he wants to go about fighting especially now with the link up with Ben and how he's been in those last three fights he's really kind of just settled into how he wants to be as a fighter What one area would you say AJ would have to look out for from Dubois? Um, I think a key thing for, for Dubois and that you've seen in a lot of his fights is his jab he's very consistent it's also, and I would know from sparring him many years ago now, but still sparring him, um, that it's a strong jab as well, powerful, it's consistent with it. He knows how to kind of make it land and get it through. Um, and it's not, it's not like he's trying to just touch you, touch you and set you up. He's trying to damage you with a jab. So that's a that's something to obviously the, they'll need to be aware of. And obviously they'll be more than aware in, in taking that into consideration when preparing. In your experience with sparring Dubois, a lot of the conversation surrounding the fight too is about Dubois' apparent leak of defence and how he fought against Philip Hergovic. I spoke to Johnny Fisher the other day and he said to me that Dubois has probably got def better defensive skills than he's credited for and he's really good at like just being a couple of inches away from bobbing him forward or being in and out of range. In your time with sparring Dubois, do you feel that he was better defensively than given credit for? Uh, yeah, look, there's always something to pick at. Only he got through and won the fight and 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 did did well in that fight overall. Yeah, okay, to pick from the performance, he got tagged with too many right hands. That I think it's quite an obvious critique. And if it's obvious to us, then it's extremely obvious to him and the team for them to try and prepare for or sort out in in his quote unquote leaky defense. Um, it's something they'll be very aware of as well. That's a few couple of things for me. Uh, apparently, the plan is going to be for whatever the outcome is that uh, Fury and AJ will fight each other. Does that get discussed in the gym? <laughs> no, no, it's not something that's been discussed in the gym. Um, like AJ, the way he is about it, he's he's got no business. He's got no interest. Sorry, fussing around with the if buts and maybes of the afters. He's only ever focused on immediately what's in front of him and and the immediate competition he's coming up to next so post that who knows it'd be a great fight it'd be like we've been asking for it for i don't know how many years and maybe it's not come at the exact time we all wanted but as and when it comes no one's gonna not watch it so it makes sense you're back aj i imagine uh yeah yeah at the moment with the way things are going and the way everything's been yeah i'd, I'd back aj you get the victories you plan to do over Fraser Clark. What level are you at? What what type of fights are you looking for? Uh, well, like I said, I'm trying to put myself in that world title position. So we'll I'll post that fight, post the win. We'll sit down, we'll assess, we'll look at the landscape of heavyweights and see what's going on, see what's around, and probably wait until after the um, the Fury Usyk and see what happens with the belts and the certain kind of them dropping off and going in different directions and then just put herself in pole position to be fighting or challenging for one or be a contender or a final eliminator, just something along those lines. I'll leave the final word with you. What happens in your rematch with Fraser Clark? 
<laughs> ultimately I'm coming out with a win um, I'm always going to have the same mentality that I have in every fight is to get my opponent out of there I got him down and I hurt him a lot in the first one so I know he's there it's just going about it the right way Fabio wish you all the best in this fight with uh, Fraser Clark thank you so much speaking to seconds out looking forward to the fight cheers mate thank you